Ola from Portugal. That is the bakery uh, where I had brunch there. We have some prices. Kebab huts. So they use the euro here in Portugal. A falafel sandwich, four euros, six with, I guess, fries and a drink. Kind of typical fast food prices. So, it is a 25 minute walk into the center of Lisbon here to the uh, main square, but it looks uh, very interesting right here. So I thought that I would start the video here and walk through. This is just gonna be a random walking video showing the uh, streets of Lisbon. This is my second time to Portugal. I was here in 2016. I didn't see a whole lot. I flew into Lisbon, stayed here for, I forget, four or five days or something. And then I went to Sintra, which is about an hour or so away from Lisbon by train, train and bus, I think, with all my stuff and stayed there for a few days and then caught a bus to Spain going south changing buses in Faro and so I just uh, walked around Faro for 30 minutes or something like that and then that was it went into Spain to Sevilla and Granada hey. Now, I'm partly here to meet up with a friend who I met up with yesterday. She has some friends over on the coast and went to visit them for a couple of days. And then we will meet up later. I have my hotel here for two nights and so the uh, general plan here is to get a rental car here in Lisbon in two days, drive up to where she is now, meet up with her, and then go see some more of Portugal. So. For those who might be uh, new to the channel here, sometimes I talk about kind of random things in my videos, especially the like walking through a city video. I'm just gonna record like one clip here, most likely, we'll see. Just walking along. And we'll see uh, what, uh, there is to talk about, as well as just give you the chance to experience, see, hear. As you can see, great street side restaurants here. Nice parks. Lots of people out and about here. August 12th, in the middle of peak season for uh, Europe. So, one thing that I wanted to mention here is the ongoing camera saga. So as I mentioned in previous videos, then I usually film with another camera, a DJI Osmo Action 1. 
V2 came out, and I don't like the looks of it. It's like totally different and weird, and so I don't want to get it. And so I was on the uh, Greek island of Eos about a week ago, and I took that camera underwater, and it is supposed to be waterproof. But the water seeped in to the battery compartment and killed the camera, like, instantly. Just dead. Won't turn on. I waited for it to dry out, etc. And I don't think that thing is coming back to life. So I am now filming on my GoPro. I don't really like the GoPro for a whole bunch of reasons. And so I want to get another DJI. Osmo action. Also, I was thinking of leaving Greece because it is peak season, it is crowded. I wanted to go to less popular islands, but the less popular islands of Greece have less accommodation, but in peak season, the less accommodation gets all full up. And so, it was totally not my plan to do the Greek Islands tour that I ended up doing, going to Santorini, Eos, Paros, and then Mykonos to catch my flight. Those are all popular islands. But I was unable to find any reasonable accommodation and no accommodation at all on some of the islands. So it just kind of wasn't working out to go to the places that I wanted to go. Wow, this is quite a scene here. And then factor in my camera dying on me and wanting to replace it. And this friend of mine was coming to Portugal and we had been talking about meeting up anyways. So. I decided that I needed to... Well, we have a very, very odd... Statue there, is that a Portuguese thing? Wow. Holy moly. That is a view there. Incredible. There you go, Lisbon, the castle, the main square, and the historical center down there. That is where I'm heading. Quite a city. The Atlantic Ocean, or yeah, I think yeah. that's some like river or something like that that goes into the Atlantic. Here we have a uh, it's okay. This is the view. So as I was saying, I needed to replace that camera. And so I decided to make a stop on my way leaving the Greek islands in a major city to try and find a replacement for that exact same camera. 
There was a direct flight from Mykonos, which is next to Paros Island. Direct flight to Paris for a reasonable price. I forget how much. A little less than $200, I think. Including luggage. And so I went to Paris for three days. And then I had this flight booked to Lisbon. Also direct flight, about the same price. 180 something dollars, I think. Now, that uh, brings up a good story to tell that I'll get to later, which is the absolute fiasco that I ended up in in the course of trying to get to the airport yesterday to catch my flight, but I will tell that in a minute. Okay, I have to make a decision here. Go down these stairs that everybody seems to be coming from. Mm. Nah, that looks kind of long and not too interesting of an area. Let's keep on going through the streets. So, I flew to Paris, looked online for DJI Osmo cameras. DJI is a company that makes drones. They're the most uh, famous drone company. Most of the drones that you see flying around are DJI. But they also made this competitor to the GoPro, the DJI Osmo Action. And I prefer it to the GoPro for a bunch of reasons, mostly because I like the color, the video quality better than the GoPro that I am filming with right now, the GoPro Hero 10. So I found a DJI store quite close to my hotel. I walk over there and they do not have the DJI Osmo Action 1. They only have the two. The new one that came out within the last year, I think. Another nice square here. And so I ask them, is there like anywhere else that I might be able to find it in Paris? And they say no. That camera is basically not being distributed in Europe at all. So, that was a bummer. And so I basically just gave up and decided not to go walking around visiting various camera stores hoping to find it because it just didn't sound like it was going to happen. Homenagem da Santa Casa de Misericordia de Lisboa, Lotaria Nacional ao Cautelero. No idea. So I just uh, enjoyed my time in Paris. Didn't film at all. And then I was uh, corresponding with my friend Jackie. She hasn't been in previous videos. Look at this TV. Oh, it's like a rickshaw. I was corresponding with my friend Jackie. She is from Rhode Island originally, but has lived in California a lot recently. Really cool uh, lady. Hopefully you'll see her in uh, upcoming videos. We'll see. And so I told her that I was unable to uh, find the camera. And she messaged back and said, 
Well, you can use mine. Now, I had forgotten that I had recommended the same camera to her because she actually has a YouTube channel, but she hasn't uh, posted on it in... years and years, like a long time, but she wants to get back to it. Okay. Not exactly sure whether to go that way or that way, but I do want to get sort of that general direction. Maybe uh, we give this a try. So lots of great options for uh, touring around Lisbon. So, she had the exact camera that I wanted and had it with her and was flying in yesterday. And so uh, I will probably use that camera here in Portugal and maybe I will just buy it from her. I think she's okay with selling it because she hasn't actually been using it. So anyways, that was just a cool coincidence there. Okay, sorry about the uh, construction noise here. Which way to go? Let's go ahead and show these nice restaurants. Other than the noise, that's got to be bad for business. Thai Masaman Coco Japche Noodles. Looks like it might be like a uh, fusion Asian restaurant, tattoo parlor. Wow, another really, really cool square here. Another rickshaw, a bigger one. This is an ultimate dining spot or place to get a beer. A ruined church by the looks of it. You can see the sky through there. And let's take a quick look. I'm going to assume that uh, you have to wait in a line and whatnot. Okay, I'm really curious to uh, see it, so I'm going to uh, go for it. <clears throat> the Carmo Archaeological Museum. Built in 1389, the Carmo Convent, and then destroyed by an earthquake in 1755, 
partially rebuilt and then the rebuilding efforts were seized. And this is what it looks like now. So we are 10 minutes from the downtown area or from the uh, main uh, central square. Not really central because it is on the uh, water. So basically we'll be walking through the most interesting historical part of the city from now on. So I'm going to tell the story of trying to get to the airport yesterday in Paris and this one was entirely my fault my bumbling uh, total travel rookie mistake so I had a hotel right in the uh, center of Paris right near Notre Dame great location affordable for Paris in August. $115 a night, I think. And so I woke up yesterday with tons and tons of time. My flight was 2.40 p.m. And I think that I left before 10. Basically, I had about five hours to get to the airport. Because I wasn't exactly sure how long it was going to take. It was looking a little confusing. I wasn't certain if there was going to be a direct train or uh, have to change, take buses, whatever. So. Just before leaving, I did another search and discovered that uh, it looked like there was a direct train from a metro station near my hotel straight to the Charles de Gaulle Airport. That is where I'd flown into from Mykonos. So it was looking really easy and I was assuming that I would arrive at the airport with uh, tons of time and then have time to lounge around and have breakfast and whatnot and uh, better early than late when it comes to airports especially. This is such an interesting 
part of the city that I don't know that I saw the last time. I was on the other side of uh, Lisbon and explored more over there and into the center. But I don't think that I saw these streets. Really, really nice. So I uh, get to the metro station and go up to the ticket office and sure enough there is in fact a direct train straight to Charles de Gaulle airport. So that is great. I get on the train and within 10 minutes it stops and everybody starts getting off the train. I ask a woman there who I assumed uh, might speak English and she did. French uh, girl I think but uh, spoke English and so she said there's some problem with the train. It can't go from there to Gare du Nord. And so I needed to get to Gare du Nord, North Paris train station. I needed to go there another way. So she tells me take the four metro train. Hello. Oh, thanks. Okay, there is the uh, square right there, but let's walk through this area. And so uh, I get off the train with my backpack and now I'm wondering like is my ticket still going to be valid now that I'm getting off this train and going to try to find another one. And sure enough I had to leave the, uh, not the whole station, but I had to go through gates, put my ticket in, it worked there, and then uh, I found the four and it worked again, the ticket to go uh, through that entrance back into like another part of the metro station because it was a different kind of a train and so I uh, get on the four and after like two stops no thanks after two stops it stops in the same situation so here you go like the main uh, pedestrian zone. It's gorgeous. So I was in this area the last time. And so I have to go through the same thing again and get off. Some nice looking pastries, whatever you call these. And so I get off the uh, train and everybody just waits there. The train then turns around and shoots back the other direction and then we're standing there and I'm like how does that work when this is the way that the train comes in like how long are we gonna have to wait here what's going on like I didn't even know should I just abandon this uh plan and just get a taxi or what but I waited a few minutes and then another train comes along I get on that train and things work out from there and I get to Gare du Nord and so at Gare du Nord, then I discover that there is a train direct from there to Charles de Gaulle Airport. Let's uh, get back into the quieter pedestrian area here. And so it has a ways to go, like another like 45 minutes or so, but I still have plenty of time. And so I'm sitting there on the train, biding my time, reading some messages, you know, looking on Facebook, whatever, just killing time. And then for some reason, I forget why, then as we are almost to Charles de Gaulle Airport, I happen to look at my email for the reservation for this flight. My flight is not from Charles de Gaulle Airport. It is from Orly. This is the other main airport in Paris. I'm like, oh man, what have I done? Like I've just traveled like an hour basically to get here. I don't know where the Orly station is. I'm hoping like, well, maybe it's kind of nearby, you know, one can hope. I look on the map, 
It is the exact opposite side of Paris. I have just traveled an hour in the wrong direction. I still have extra time, but going by train is not going to work. I'm not going to catch the flight. It's going to be like an hour and a half of travel time plus waiting and plus there was the problems if there's more delays, canceled trains, I have to change, etc. Then forget it. Even if it all goes smooth, I would probably miss my flight. My only option, okay, actually, the option that I was hoping for was a bus, you know, bus between airports, but that does not exist. There's no direct bus. According to the information, people, no direct bus from Charles de Gaulle Airport to Orly Airport. My only option is a taxi. And so I immediately get to the taxi area and I'm wondering how much this is going to cost. Like, it could be 200 euros or something, like as much as the flight cost. So I'm actually pleasantly surprised when I go up to him and I say, how much is this going to be? He's going to use the meter. But it will be 60 to 70 euros. So that is... Pretty reasonable actually for how far away we are because it's going to be all freeway and it's going to take 40 minutes and it works out so it ended up being 73 euros i just gave him 80 keep the change but i got there to the check-in desk at exactly two hours before my flight so Perfect, basically exactly on time. And then the line for the check in counter was short. The security line was super short. And I got into the uh, area by the gate an hour before boarding time so there's a little lesson in why you should leave early for the airport you never know what's going to happen i remember back home in california i think that we were taking my mom to the airport and we get into this little tiny town on the way, driving there, and traffic was completely stopped. I forget why. If it was an accident or construction or what, but we were stuck for like an hour. But luckily we had uh, extra time and made it. So, moral of the story, Better to be early, sitting at the airport bored, than stressed out, wondering if you're going to miss an important flight. It's going to ruin your trip or at least cost you a lot of money. So out there is the Tagus River. It is the longest river on the Iberian Peninsula. Iberia is Spain and Portugal. And so it comes from Spain, flows down through Portugal, and then into the Atlantic Ocean out there. And what a just stunning sight this is, where it opens up. Massive, massive square here. Incredible Lisbon. And 
let's get a little bit closer to the water here. Feel those ocean river breezes.